Well, hello everybody. Welcome to Let's Chat, a Facebook Live from Lusian. You'll wait for for the very last time. So what I've decided is to have this live chat once a week to talk anything about losing weight and well-being. And being the first episode, I've decided to just talk about basically anything um, that we want to talk about. I will touch on about overeating, but the whole idea behind this group and the reason why I've chosen losing weight for the very last time is that losing weight for the very last time resonates long term. And long term is what I'm all about, is losing weight and not having to go back to that merry-go-round, the roller coaster of thinking that you're forever losing weight. So I really want to open up the forum and for you to ask me any question whatsoever when it comes to losing weight for the very last time, any concerns. And that's what my aim is to provide. Um, to this group is to finally say no to diets, is to finally to be the boss, not to be bossed by um, what the diet industry is trying to push you. And I want you to be able to ask any questions when it comes to, to losing weight and, and really take advantage, well not take advantage, but take advantage of the people in the group and, honest, and, and take advantage of me to a point where ask me questions in the sense of anything that you may be struggling with. So I'm just wanting you to, to, to come along and to enjoy this journey in the sense of being able to, to to share and to enjoy your weight loss journey. And everybody is really keen to know how to get from point A to point B, but it's in the middle, the struggle is that we encounter the blockages, the plateaus that we need to really touch on to understand what to expect when we are losing weight. And losing weight for the very last time it just brings that sense of joy and happiness, knowing that, that you'll never ever have to go on to a weight loss journey. Now, I'm not here to take anything away from you. I'm here I'm here to just sorry to modify, I got a message from, from Nikki and I know Patricia is um, is watching. It says here, bring them on camera. Any tips on portion sizes too big? I don't want I don't lose weight too small and I end up snacking. That's a really good question, Nikki, because portion size, if it's too big, um, you might lose weight. If it's too small, you end up snacking. Portion size all comes down to your, your, your hand. So if you look at, for example, if you want a, a piece of uh, a meat, for example, your portion size would be basically the size of your palm and the thickness of your palm. That's what it comes down to, that's your portion size. And portion size, if you, if you find that you're hungry and you haven't really eaten enough, it's not always going to be about your portion size. You could be dehydrated. You could be tired. So when it comes to portion size, just make sure that you do eat enough, that you, you're not skimping on food. And really ask yourself, the, ask yourself those questions. Are you, are you hungry? So when it comes to overeating, I always follow the basics. And that is you're either um, stressed, tired or dehydrated or you haven't planned or prepared your food and you're looking to snack. So to go back to Nikki's question on portion size, yeah, just 
plan and prepare and make sure that your portion size is really to to your um, yeah, to your hand and to your and to your thickness. When it comes to portion size, when I embarked on my weight loss journey 17 years ago, the number one area in which I really had to focus on was my portion. I wasn't lazy, I would always mow the lawn, wash the car, go for walks. Even when I was 152 kilos, I used to always move, move around. So I knew straight away that my portion sizes were out of control. I mean, out of the control. And my beliefs for a portion size was you know, having a big, a big plate because I was a big person. So the way that I was able to take control of my portion control was to go into a program called Light and Easy at that time. And the, what and I'm not endorsed by Light and Easy, but what I had learned, I always look at what did I learn from from going on Light and Easy, and what Light and Easy really taught me was portion. Control and and when you're changing your portion size from this amount to this amount, it's hard work. There's no easy way out. It's um, it's a shock to the system because you're so used to eating, um, or I was so used to eating a size or a plate of this portion for so long, and they go from this portion to this portion was a shock, a shock to the system. So, and my portion size before was out of control, so I never knew what portion size was all about. And it just took time. It just took time to get used to eating that amount of food when my body was used to eating a large amount of food because it's what we've been taught and what we've been programmed to do. So my tip is that when it comes to portion size, give it time. And that is what it comes down to. Any other questions? I will keep on just talking about other ways in which we can look at helping with that. And I also want to talk about overeating because what the weight loss industry doesn't teach us is why we overeat in the first place. When we overeat, we can overeat when we're happy, when we're sad, uh, we're going to celebrate because food is there, uh, because it's probably, if, if you go to a party or a celebration and work colleagues, it's a birthday because it's there, it's for free, so we might as well eat it. So there's a lot of reasons why we overeat. We can overeat when we're tired, when we're agitated, when we're dehydrated. We can overeat when we're stressed because we're thinking about things. We can also overeat when we haven't, we haven't planned or prepared our meals. Because when we haven't planned or prepared, then we're just looking for something that can really help us. Or we may order food online because they're convenient, because we don't have anything ready to eat. So overeating, and what I have done in the past is in, in regards to overeating, is that I have organized my food on the, on the weekends. I'm not perfect, sometimes I'm looking for food also. But whenever I plan or prepare or know what I'm eating, I'm less likely to overeat food. And in the beginning when I was losing my weight, to reduce temptations, I wouldn't really have the foods that I was eating before, out of sight, out of mind. I'm not saying that you have to rearrange your whole cupboard or fridge because you might have guests coming through, but in the beginning when you're losing weight, in the beginning when you're on this weight loss journey, it's not about denial or taking food away from you. You know yourself than anybody else. And you know your temptations, you know your habits, you know what you like. So in the time being, you need to not have those temptations in the first place. 
that will also create overeating. And really ask yourself a question and give yourself a score out of 10. 10 being that you're so hungry you could eat anything in front of you. Or one is that you're so full that you don't want to see any food for a while. So by giving yourself a number in the sense of five, I'm okay, really ask yourself, are you hungry? And if, when you do overeat, when, what were you in that situation? What, what were you thinking? What were you going through when you're eating? And I've got a really simple one when it comes to overeating as well. There's three items that you need when you eat. That's a table, a chair, and a plate. You need a plate to put your food on, on a table, sitting on the chair. Because when we are a lot more mindful in what we eat, because what I have found in the past, if I'm watching TV, behind a computer or the phone, and I've got food with me, I'm just doing this. I'm not really being mindful of what's in front of me as far as what's my food. I'm just worried about what's on my screen and all of a sudden, wow, I've just finished that whole bottle of popcorn. So be mindful, be aware of your environment and the situation that you're in. So table, chair, plate, that's another way that will help you avoid overeating. And another tip to overcome overeating is just put what you're going to eat on your plate. Being a Italian background, I remember as a child that our table would be covered with food. And I, I get that. So our plates would be empty at the table. We will serve ourselves up with the food onto our plates. And then there'll be food in front of us. And we'll be eating, 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 eating. And then there might be some food left over. And then I, back when I was eight, nine, ten years old, even in my teenagers, my belief was, and what I was pounding about, is that you couldn't leave any food because there'd be a waste. So you had to eat what was on your plate. But on top of that, there could be some leftover pasta or leftover meatballs or leftover food. And there could only be two or three left. And then we'll be told, oh, we can't waste that. We better eat it right now. So we're overeating on top of not, make, not having any leftovers. So what I've, what I've done over the years is that I will serve my plate at the kit, at the in in the actual kitchen cooking area. I will fill my plate there where I'm going to eat, and that's it. I wouldn't go back for seconds. And whatever was on my plate that I know I could eat, my portion size is all I would allow myself to eat. That's controlling your portion. That's my one plate, that's what I'm gonna eat. I'm not going back for seconds or thirds or fourths or fifths or sixths. It's not like one of these all you can eat scenarios. You pay your $20 and then you can eat whatever you want and you overeat for the sake because food is there. You've paid your $20 and you can eat until you're gonna throw up. So when it comes to overeating, there's, not, there's a lot of factors to it. And I, I wanna go, through the list again. Are you tired? Are you dehydrated? Have you planned? Have you prepared your food? Have you got the right portion? All those areas come to overeating. And I would love more questions. Water does also help as well. Drink lots of water that also stops you from overeating. Sometimes we overeat because we're bored. We've got nothing else to do. So you need to keep yourself occupied at the same time as well. And I know all this sounds easy. It's easier said than done, but you have to start from somewhere. You have to start 
getting yourself into that habit. And old habits take a while to overcome. So if you've been used to eating big portions, or you've been used to not doing things, cause you, and the only way you can form new habits is repeat, 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 repeat. The only way you're good at you get you get good at doing something is by repeating over and over and over until you can train yourself. You can train your mind because we have to convince what's up here. We need, we need to convince that, no, we must eat this way or have this amount of food, and then we're gonna change our habits. I'm not taking it in the, away from you. See, the moment you, the moment you go into a typical diet, because every single diet has the same common feature. I'm gonna take something away from you. I'm gonna take carbs, I'm gonna take protein, I'm gonna take snacks away from you. I'm gonna take wine away from you, I'm gonna take coffee away from you. I'm gonna take, 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 take. I'm not here to take anything away from you because the moment that you take something away from you, so you just have to think about it all the time. You think about it, you overthink about it, and then you overeat, and then you just go crazy. So it's not about taking things away from you, it's just learning, having, not having as much of it. You can overeat and put on weight by eating healthy foods and having too much of it. So the moment you don't stress about food because you're not taking, say, say something away from you, you're not overthinking about it, you're more relaxed about it. So my approach in the later years is making sure that you don't do this. A question from Nikki. I find it if I start the day well, get up early, have my run, I manage to keep on making good choices. But if I put the alarm on snooze, it goes all wrong. <laughs> it's so true because it's like you're in this routine and routine is key because you've set yourself up and it's how well you start that day because you, once you break routine and you find that you're out of synchronization, you feel like you're just chasing your day and you're chasing one step after the other. And it's a really good point and I like routine because it, it, it sets out, it sets us up for the whole day. So I'm, I, for example, every Monday morning, I'll go for a run. Um, the clock's at six o'clock and, and by seven o'clock I'm out the door and by eight o'clock I'm back home. So it's true. Managing, starting your day and off, off, off a good, you know, starting your day off a good um, step really, really helps. So I suppose that how do you overcome this? How do you overcome where you might hit the snooze button? Well, you need to put yourself in that frame of mind that you know that if you hit that snooze button, you know what's gonna happen to you for the rest of the day. You know it's gonna be all, you can be chasing, your, chase, chasing yourself all day long. So you need to put yourself in that situation, knowing that I stick to my promise of getting up and going for that run or going for that walk. You know how you're gonna feel and what it's gonna give you at the end. Where you put yourself in the other scenario. If I hit that snooze button and go back to sleep, and my routine's broken because you've been there before, that your day is gonna be out of whack. That means you're gonna be out of whack and then everything else is out of whack. So you need to put yourself in that situation. It happened to me the other day. I was contemplating about going for, you know, going for a run and I almost convinced myself because if we're gonna convince up here that I was going to do it, but I thought, no, I'm going because if I don't go, I know I'm going to beat myself up again afterwards. 
and I don't want to do that. I don't want to put myself down and be hard on myself. I'll go, I'll start, and that's what happens. So it's a really good point that Nikki's brought up, is that keep your promise and stick to your routine because that is going to give you the best start towards your day, your goals, what you what you set yourself up to. Keep on talking, I just have some water. I like the whole name, Lose Some Weight for the Very Last Time. Someone asked me that, what was it like knowing that you lost your weight for the very last time. And I said, fantastic, because for so many years, I would wake up every Monday, give myself another promise that I'm going to go into a weight loss journey. And not knowing that I have to do that takes a lot of stress, because stress, when you hang on to stress, it releases a chemical called cortisol. Now, I won't get too technical, but that particular chemical reaction can make you put on weight. So losing weight for the very last time was, yeah, was just the, the moment I decided to be the boss and not being bossed by weight loss companies and diet industries, is when I start to get success because the weight loss industry will tell us what to do, how we eat, what we should uh, exercise and start bossing us around and and diets are just generic. They're not really specified for you, for your circumstances, for your lifestyle, for all of that. So really take charge and be the boss of you and don't let anyone or any company tell you what to do, the new fad diet, and do it this way. Once you find something that works for you, then stick to it. Don't get distracted or be detoured or, or, or someone saying to you, try it this way. Stick to what works for you. And the moment that you take control of what you feed your mind, and how you feed your body is the is where you'll start to lose weight for the very last time. And it it you know it's test and measure and and what happens companies will will give you promises and take things away from you but just be mindful about that losing weight for the very last time. Now imagine that you will never ever have to go on the weight loss journey ever again. Imagine that you have full control of how you eat and what you eat. Imagine that you can eat any food to a point. Imagine that nothing is being gonna be taken away from you ever again. That can all happen. You see, the weight loss industry needs people to rely on them. But they don't really want them, want you to lose weight. Okay, this is really good because I like answering questions. Leanne said, hi Leanne. Great info, thank you. Routine definitely works for me. I'm starting to really be conscious of my portion size as well. Yeah, so this is really good. The first live chat, we've spoken about routine, we've spoken about portion size, I've spoken about overeating. All these little one, two, five percenters makes a big difference. And and, and having a planner really helps as well. And to write things down, to mean like we don't rely to do it always in our mind. By having a plan and by writing things down and saying, well, this is what I'm going to do for this week and sticking to your promises. 
really, really helps. And one other tip that I used to also use as well is when I used to serve my food up, I used to put my food in a dark plate, not in a white plate, because I, look, I get a little bit um, crazy sometimes because I want to make sure that all the white areas are covered with food. By having a dark plate, I found that my portion size was reduced because this, the surface area wasn't as big. So there's lots of tips that will help you do that as well. I know we're getting close to a half hour, but I'm more than happy to keep on talking any questions that you may have because it's a really good opportunity. And like I said, today being the first live chat, we're just speaking about everything or any questions you have. And moving forward for our live chat for next Monday, I will let put it into your hands and for you to ask any questions that you may have. Hi lady from Melbourne. And I think that I, I don't like to prepare too much. I like to, for people just to ask me questions because if I'm not able to ask you questions, then I answer your questions, they're not, they don't really know what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, dark plate, Nikki. And the reason why I've decided to do this small group is to really focus on those people who really want to lose weight for the very last time. And I've been able to keep my weight off now for 17 years. And the question I get all the time, how have I been able to lose weight and keep it off for another 17 years? I'll go back to what we spoke earlier in the chat, and that's habits, that's routine, that's watching my portion size, but in the last probably three, four years, I've really haven't, I haven't decided, I've been exploring of new ways to eat in, in the sense of, I really don't want to take anything away from me because I know that the moment I do take food away from me, that I, I overthink it. So I think being a lot more relaxed, not being a stress. And if there's a certain food that I used to love eating all the time, it would make me go out and look for an alternative as well. And I find that will satisfy me. And I suppose that what we need to also look at is to be open mind and really question our beliefs of what's holding us back from losing weight. And one of my beliefs that I had when I was eight years old, probably, no, probably even more than that, probably about five years old, is that I wasn't allowed to leave any food on my plate. And that was a belief. And I carried that belief right through until I was about 33. And to the point where I said, well, it's okay to leave food on my plate. It didn't really have to I wasn't that person where I was forced by my parents that it um, was unpolite to leave food on the plate. So knowing that I've had enough and I've stopped makes a real difference. Those extra bit of extra food you've had over the week, over the day, adds up and that's how you put on weight. And, and that's why I focus more on food rather than exercise. Exercise is great because exercise really helps you um, mentally, it stimulates you, puts you into the zone, it gives all these health benefits. I don't want to go hard, but we know what exercise does for us. I focus more on the mind and I also focus more on the food. And it also, and I spoke about this on a really good um, podcast by Leanne, who's on our group. And I talk about our relationships our relationship with food, our relationship with exercise, and our relationship with ourselves. Because if we don't have good relationships with food, exercise, and ourselves, one or the other will bring us down. For example, 
when I was at my extreme, I would use exercise as a reward or I would use food as a reward. I would be very good all week and then I would say to myself, okay, I've been great this week. I deserve to now eat and drink whatever I want over the weekend. And then I've overeaten on the weekend. So then I punish myself. Like I actually punish myself for overeating the next day on the Monday. And I would do three hours on the treadmill, three hours in the gym, just punish myself, punish myself because I gave my permission, I gave myself permission to overeat because I had a good week. And then I would put myself down. So do you see what I mean? That weight loss is a partnership. It's a partnership between your mind, your mouth, and your movement. And I talk about this in the weight loss plan. I talk about this in my book, If I Can, You Can. I talk about that whole relationship of of how we see food, how we see exercise, how we see ourselves, how we talk to ourselves. What dialogue do we use about ourselves? I know I can't do that, or that's impossible. Uh, no, I can't do this, or someone told me that's not right, and I was, our dialogue, our internal dialogue that we use. So the Weight Loss Planner, which is a, a free 150 page planner that I'm giving, uh, that's, that, that's free, covers all of this and, and really puts you into that routine, that habit creation of writing things down and look at what you eat and how you're thinking and how you're moving and all, and all of this. So this is why I encourage you to improve your relationship with yourself and with food and how you see exercise and, and just being aware of your internal dialogue that you use when you see things. I'm glad you love the planner, Lisa, um, that it has helped you so much. And a lot of thought <coughs> has gone into the planner. It just hasn't been something that I've just put together. And where the planner came from is, it was done probably about six months ago and I've improved it over time. And I used it for my clients who train with me. So one way that I could guarantee someone's weight loss is by them, by me having a look at what, what, what they were writing down in their planner, their food logs, the exercise logs, how they're thinking. I can guarantee you that if you write down what you've been eating, how you've been thinking and how you've been moving over 30 in, in a 30 day plan, I, that data, we can really pinpoint the areas in which we can work on, that you can work on. Because we tend not to write things down. So we, what the planner does, it gives you accountability for your own actions. So whatever you put into that planner is what you get out of it. And I know it can be hard sometimes to face the truth. But the more you put in it, the more you get out of it. And that's, that's where it is. Besides the recipes and, and the different exercises in there, it really will help you. It basically, it's all the information that helped me not only lose my weight, but keep my weight off. Are we still happy to keep on talking or to keep on chatting? If you have any other questions, I've allowed at least 45 minutes, even though I said half an hour, to have a chat. Um, and also I love any feedback whatsoever, even with the group. The whole idea with losing weight for the very last time group is to listen to the group members. 
what what you want, where you need more help in. And there's occasions use the word help, areas in which you need to improve upon. So the more you can tell me, the more that I can provide you with the tools that can help you lose weight for the very last time. And that's really important to me. And I would really appreciate that if you are happy with the group, is to share the group. If you're happy with the planner, share the planner. It's to, for me, it's to be able to inspire and to help as many people as I possibly can through you. And that to me is really important. I'm very passionate on what I do because what happens with diet companies? They really take advantage on the vulnerable people, on the vulnerable people because you're in that emotional state that you do whatever it takes to lose the weight. I would find myself there at three o'clock in the morning watching TV with those info commercials. Buy this ab roller, buy this cruncher, buy this piece of equipment. They weren't focusing on what the equipment can do for you. All they were focusing on how compact it is and, and how many you can fit under your bed. And they, they prey on the vulnerable people. And that what really upsets me when it comes to the diet companies is they'll give you this two week uh, new diet and new pills and new tablets and all this bullshit that um, will promise you that you'll lose weight. And yes, you might lose weight, but you won't lose weight for the very last time. You won't lose weight your way. You won't lose weight the way that's going to be sustainable for a lifetime. So we need to change our beliefs and change our views how we look at losing weight. We're losing weight, but what are we losing from that weight? Not just weight, we're losing all that garbage in our head. You know, we, 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 we live in a, a new life. We live in a life because living our best life starts right now. Losing weight for the very last time, long term, the last time that you ever have to rely on anyone else and you can finally be the boss of yourself, not being bossed by other people. We have to learn to take and to say no to all that BS out there that people are telling us what to do. Now, I can see there's two more people out there looking, which is great. I'm really happy that people have come on board today because like I said, we're just talking and we're just rambling and we're, we're coming up with solutions and ways that's going to help you lose weight for the very last time. So any other questions? We've got probably another five minutes because then I need to do a few things today and, and, and speak to a few clients on Zoom and, and do some activities. And please, for our next chat, which is going to be next Monday, same time, 10 o'clock, please post on the group page of any topics and we can cover several topics in the chat. And that would also really help me help you on the areas in that you need help on to help you to lose your weight. I think I've said help a few times, but that's what it's all about. It's all about losing weight for the very last time, the real way. Because the weight loss king is not here to take anything away from you. You can still have your snacks, you can still have your food, you can still enjoy all the wonders out there. But 
in portion control and up to a certain point. And this is why I even do the cooking classes on every Wednesday, just to give you variety. So it's not, I'm not just about how to move or what to think or how to eat or to give you motivation. It's everything, everything I represent. But what I really represent and what I'm all about is losing weight for the very last time and losing weight your way. Any other questions? We've got three viewers. How great is that? That is fantastic. I, I'm just so happy that we've got three people. And I've got to put some colour. There we go. Okay, well, I think that's about it today. I'm really happy that this is our live, first live chat, and we've gone longer than I expected. And I really hope that this has helped, and I really love answering the questions. The more questions, the better, because that way it really challenges me to answer your questions and to help you on your way. And the more interaction we have, the more fun it is. And I will see you next Monday at six o'clock. So next Monday at 10 o'clock for our next chat. And don't forget our cooking class on Wednesday at 6 p.m. And until then, I want you to lose weight for the very last time. And thank you so much for tuning in to our first live chat on Facebook. Have a great day.